all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we are back with the via board and um, and uh, first we need to change a few things i changed the capacitor already so that was the uh, one that was sort of blown ish so it's a botch job couldn't do it properly the solder on one of, on these things in this sort of industrial grade is actually a bit too tough to melt uh, I had my iron there sitting for way longer than I, it should be and it didn't budge at all. So uh, the other thing I wanted to change was the fan because this one was making a lot of noise and I had a correct one laying around right here. So we'll be going to replace it with this particular unit. Um, pretty easy replacement. So apart from, from the bloat connector everything was and if you are thinking about the thermal compound, I've already replaced that. Um, the older one was in pretty bad shape, but yeah, it's also been sitting. Uh, so these second-hand units don't, yeah, depending on who you buy it from, they might get some refurbishment. But like mine was um, like a dusty old unit that had a blown cap. Um, some people got these units with just 256 megabytes of RAM. I was lucky enough to get double of that um, and of course you can still buy the memory modules or DDR266 I think um, is still available so that's DDR1 so it's like super slow but it's still available and you can still buy them uh, however um, yeah sometimes you're just lucky enough and you get more so this supports up to 1 gigabyte uh, I don't know if I'll ever upgrade it in the future uh, I don't see a point really to upgrading it but um, I don't even know how these uh, screws were fixed they were I think just scraped on to the heat sink um, and the heat sink doesn't have any holes for them as you might be able to tell but uh, yeah let's go and replace that fan And if anything blows right now, then something's wrong. And if not, so far so good. Power it on. Power's on fine. Waiting for the signal. There's the beep. And there's the logo. So let me just point it over the screen. There you go. There is the uh, logo. And it should board into something. So I've I do have uh, yeah, there you go. No, no system there. So at least it's uh, boarding well. Um, yeah, time to put it in a proper case. So this is the case I'm going to be working with. Uh, I know it looks kind of cheap because it is, and the reason I got this because the super tiny micro AT, uh, mini ITX cases that would have fit that board were super expensive um, north of two to three hundred dollars here in India front IO everything should work your hard drive LED is kind of like on the night rider but just single LED so it won't be blinky but it gets gives kind of a night rider vibe and a red power button because why not and I flip that over open that up and we should be good to go um, starting off with of course the io panel uh, which i did get with the um, with the board and from there on we'll move all right now they don't really say which holes are for atx and atx and stuff like that uh, it is supposed to fit both micro atx and micro atx and micro itx I, yeah there's just so many of them um, so apparently the form factor of this one, I think it's micro ITX, uh, was act designed by Via themselves. So uh, with the Via chipset, and they used to sell this. This was their um, form factor. So I just need to place it down gently just to see which screws I need. So it's that one there, this one there, that one, and the one at the top, and none in the middle. 
so I think I've got every school I need to know about and we should be good to go Alright, so it's uh, almost done clearing up to do, but before we do that, I want to try and power, in, power it on, uh, test a few things including front USB, uh, which I can just add a keyboard and a USB flash drive to boot and test if the hard drive is detected in the BIOS and see um, if something's not working or if everything's working, good enough. Uh, as you can notice there's no fan it's a very low tdp part so it doesn't really need a fan and of course it's going to be in an air conditioned um, environment so there's no really need for it to have a fan and let's see if we can all right the monitor is plugged in 
pretty much everything is about to go. Let's see if it actually powers on. Oh, that's magic smoke. Uh, you can see power. Lights on. Fans on. Waiting for the beep. There's the beep. And the motor's on. So everything's working. Uh, let's get to the um, bus and see if our hardware is detected. And there you go, our one terabyte SATA hard drive over a SATA to IDE converter. And uh, let's boot from the USB drive. And seems to be booting fine from the USB drive. So that means our capacitor is okay. Let's see if the boot actually takes place. And there we go. Uh, that is it booting from the USB drive. So there is a plan to add a disk as well, like a CD drive. Right now I'm using a USB one for stuff that doesn't boot over regular uh, media like USB, so stuff that just boots over disk. But there are some things I found that might just boot over a proper IDE disk. Um, and for that, I have this, which is a CD drive that's been extracted from a laptop, has SATA on there. So I'm just waiting for a converter thingy that would allow me to attach that to a regular SATA port. It's SATA, but it's kind of like a slim disk form factor, which is a bit different. And then just press this teeny tiny button there, uh, and that pops out and works as a proper hard drive. And it should be easily mountable on the top uh, if i give it some clearance like this um, i should be easily able to mount it without breaking anything and then the cable can just go from there through a pcie empty pci slot and then on to a id to your thing oh sorry id to a sort of thing and uh, yeah, the other option could be to go in from the uh, CD ROM, and that way I can also have it have the wire come around here. So that's all in the planning phase. Once the UI comes up, I guess that's where I'll end the video. I'll be doing live streams of installing different kind of things, including Windows XP. I uh, can see the disk right there, um, and different flavors of BSD of course Magia or Mijia however you want to call it um, this is the only operating system that would uh, in the Linux family that would um, boot and work properly on this setup and the reason is that the BIOS E3 is not strictly i686 compatible but is very much compatible, by, compatible with the i586 architecture um, of the x86 platform um, and that is only supported by Magia, Magia, whatever you want to call them, I literally don't know the great pronunciation but uh, once uh, I think they are the only ones supporting it no one literally supports i486 anymore uh, so that's sort of something I'm trying to work on and the Linux kernel does like you can build and boot Linux kernel on or i486 uh, even the non DX one so you can have like fake uh, uh, FPU and stuff like that but it doesn't really work on a regular uh, 486 the needs for 486 BX 386 support was very 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 recently removed I don't know if any LTS kernel still has support for it but I am very doubtful of that fact uh, so 386 are out of the question but uh, 486 should still boot and even when stuff like 486 boots 
it's usually uh, that a lot of features are missing straight up uh, you, you can't run stuff that needs FPU um, in a non FPU variant and then um, the view, view stuff who the stuff that needs like things like CTYD, SSE, um, CX8 so is, a, is a big concern um, and uh, of course uh, P, P, C, A or P, A, E, um, P, A, E uh, is also missing. It's missing on this one as well. So um, that's the thing that, uh, it's, so it's sort of entering the retro mode where the operating system supports its tying. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, interesting little board. Look out for all the live streams of installation. I'll be doing full length ones uh, where I would straight up just stream the entire thing and then re upload it or once the live stream is done uh, with a bit more uh, cut down version of the whole installation process. The one thing I really think this board is missing is the floppy disk uh, drive port, which is a bit different than the IDE one. Uh, works on different protocols, not the same as IDE. I have a floppy disk emulator if you guys go back and see a few of my videos there it's it's very much there but um it's just missing from this board something i thought that this board might have i did mistake one of the id ports for a floppy disk one but it turns out it just has the two id ports um also cf cards worked fine i don't know if you watched the last live stream on those it was last video in the live stream uh, where i tried out the cf card and that worked really well so uh, no issues with that as well apart from that yeah it's uh, it's working fine i can maybe start doing some cable management here and there and let the thing boot uh yeah let me go and get some zip ties <laughs> 